we go. Salute to Knicks Nation on this Friday afternoon. Another edition of Knicks Fan TV Live, the lunchtime live stream. On today's episode, it is Fan Fridays, man. Our Friday mailbag show. You guys ask the questions. We knock it out with the answers. And my guest of today, you've seen him on multiple platforms, man. Say less with Kaz. He has his own show on the Fanatics Network. MSGPM, Emmy, Emmy, Emmy Award winner on the ringer <laughs> on WWE programming. He's all over the map and finally on, joins now. Knicks Fan TV, man. Welcome our guy Kaz to the show. Hit that like button, hit the share button, and subscribe to the channel, man. Fifi, thank you so much for having me. I'm a, I'm a long-time listener, long-time supporter. I feel like this, this has been a long time coming. I'm, I'm, I finally made it to Knicks Fan TV, bro. This is amazing what you built. Thank long you for time. having me, man. I'm excited. Long time coming, man. Absolutely an honor to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let, let's talk about you before we get into the orange and blue, man, because like I said, you guys have been doing great things over there at MSG. I had Monica on uh, on the show a couple weeks ago. Shout out to Mon Monica McNutt. You did just win an Emmy Award recently. Tell me, tell me what that what that felt like to, to get that award, man. Man, before before even talking about that, we got to shout out yeah. Monica for last night. Shout out to Killing Monica, it. man. Absolutely. Play by play with Mike yeah. Breen. I'm so proud of her, bro. Like, I've worked with a lot of people in, in this media industry, but I, I'm telling you, man, Monica McNutt is really in a class of her own. So even just getting that Emmy Award is really just a byproduct of, of having great talent uh, around us. And, and, man, we just had so much fun doing those shows, doing those interviews, and just creating some incredible stuff for MSG Networks. Uh, so it's been really fun, man. I really enjoyed it. It's not over yet, you know. Yeah. We still uh, got some great stuff cooking up uh, for the playoffs in the summertime of MSG. So it's really, uh, really exciting times. But the Emmy Award, man, really was gratifying, bro. Like, I felt like, you know, a lot of the folks that I look up to in this industry – you don't really get certified until you get one of those gold trophies. So I definitely do feel like that a little bit now. And uh, and the, the fact that I got to get, get with my homegirl, Monica, for a show that we had so much fun with yep. just made it even that much better. So I'm really, really excited. A absolutely well said, man. And congratulations once again to Monica McNutt for uh, making history and continuing to blaze the trail. She was great last night with uh, Mike Breen. I pulled up a tweet on uh, on Twitter just thanking everybody for the support. And she also says that she will be uh, on the ones and twos with Breen for the entire West Coast trip. So great news for Knicks fans. And, uh, and great to see Monica really stepping into that role. You know, th this year she was uh, she was announced as the head uh, color an analyst for Knicks Radio, MSG Radio Networks, and now she's moving on to the TV side. Uh, for you, this year in your journey, because it, your journey has, has, you know, really evolved over a number of years, man. So many platforms and, and so many different levels that you hit. What was the highlight of, of your year so far? Man, I would say so far, I think everything that just, we've been building over here at Fanatics, right? Like, uh, I kind of got into a, a great situation with points bet at one point. So it kind of, I would say, I wouldn't say hindered, but it sort of changed the relationship I, I would have with MSG just because you know how the sports book game is right yeah. now. Yeah. But, you know, Fanatics sort of coming in late last year and just the sort of elevation that it had with that has been uh, really, really fun to work with so far. Uh, but in addition to that, man, uh, being able to do some great stuff with with the Ringer as yeah, well, yeah. and and do incredible work there, and and I'm working on Wale Mania right now. WrestleMania yeah, weekend yep, is yep, coming up yep. uh, in a few weeks in Philadelphia, so that's going to be an incredible time. But none of that really compares to being a dad for the second time. Absolutely. Like, I feel congratulations, like kind of, man, on air. We were you. talking off air, but congratulations again on air number two. Number yeah, two, man. yeah, yeah. The, we're making Knicks fans over here, you there know. You go. So. Uh, it's beautiful, and uh, they they've been great, and uh, the wife is great. So, but I can't complain, man. My career has has really blessed me because I've never felt like anything I'm doing I've ever had to be forced. It always felt like something I would do for free if I had to. And, yeah. I, and I feel like once you find a passion to do something, and you don't have to pull yourself out of bed to do it every day, you're excited to do it, you're motivated to do it. Uh, you never really work a day in your life, and I'm blessed to be you know, in, in those class of people that get to do incredibly fun things and stuff that I'm passionate about every yeah. day, whether it's through music, whether it's through the Knicks and basketball and the NBA, whether it's through sports betting, whether it's through pro wrestling, 
whether it's through live events, anything, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I've really enjoyed the ride this year, and uh, only uh, it's only going to elevate. That definitely want to close talking about Wale Mania and WrestleMania coming up as well. We we got a fan out on the wrestling talk as well, man. Me, I feel like me, you, and Jeff, me, you, and Jeff need like a separate, separate show to tap in we on that. that. But yeah, we we gonna we gonna close with that for sure. Uh, you know, I had Marlon Kraft on the show last week. You, you're familiar with Marlon Kraft, and he, he's on tour right now. His tour is called The Long Game, and we talked about. What does it mean to play the long game? And, 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 you know, thinking about that concept and look at your career and how it's evolved, how do you reflect on, on that term in terms of, of how your career has come along so far? I feel like in this industry, especially uh, the way it's shaped up now, it's very easy to sort of do things that are instant gratification that doesn't necessarily, you know, bode well for your future, right? Like there's lots of easy ways to go for the low hanging fruit. There's lots of easy ways to just do stuff that not necessarily is the most, uh, you know, uh, frowned upon sort of thing, I guess in my, in my estimation, but I would say as far as playing the long game with my career, just playing the long game, just in general, I never really want to do anything that doesn't speak to me personally. That doesn't feel like something that is genuine to, to, you know, my core. And, you know, I, I feel like I've had a lot of opportunities, especially in sports media. I mean, Chris, you're, you're, you're one of the guys, man, that, uh, that has built and sort of made a, a, a blueprint on how to play the long game the right way because you you've really leaned into what your passions are mm-hmm. and look what you've built, man. You've built the number one Knicks fan platform on the planet because you double is was legitimate and, and sincere to yourself. And I've always felt like I've tried to do the same thing, man, because it's very easy to just go after what everybody else is doing or, yeah, yeah. you know, what everyone's going to talk about and what it's going to be very easily clickable and doing the clickbait stuff and all that. Whereas, if you stay with what's in your core, yeah, it may take a little bit longer to get there. Yeah, you might have to take a little bit detours to get to your destination. But the the, the journey is, is so much more rewarding when you're able to do it that way. And I've been in enough industries and worked with enough talented people and enough, uh, you know, very beneficial places to know that instant gratification isn't always the best way to go about things, right? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I appreciate taking my time. I appreciate uh, playing the long game. I appreciate being able to follow my passions and knowing that if I water the grass enough and, and put enough effort into it, it'll eventually grow into things that are, you know, something that never feels like work to me, which has always been my number one goal in, in, in my life and in my career. There you go. Well said, man. Now, on to the orange and blue. Knicks were in the Rose City last night in Portland. Get a 106-93 to victory. Captain Clutch Jalen Brunson in his bag. 45 points for JB. And the defense has followed suit behind him, man. What, what were some of your key takeaways from this one? Uh, I love that we got to the point where uh, a 45-point game from Jalen Brunson is quiet. It's natural. Right? It's just <laughs> like, natural, bro. I love it. I love that, like, I'm looking at the third quarter, and he has, like, 30-plus points. I'm like, yeah. oh, he might get 50 today. He yeah. might get 50. You it's know, like, bro, we, we get... are rich, man. It just feels exactly. like we're rich, man. Man, bro, you know what? You know you know the doldrums we've been through at that point guard position. So, just seeing JB get uh, the minutes restriction lifted off of him and sort of letting him get back into his bag, he's, he's such a sticky player, right? Like, he's yeah. a guy where if you watch – players that are young or have a whole don't have a ton of experience guarding top tier point guards you just see how we just toys with them and just you know manipulates defenses into drawing fouls or getting yeah. ahead ones or you know just drawing defenses in like you could only sort of compare them to maybe a handful of guards in the NBA that does it but I think he's in his class of his own as far as the footwork is concerned because he just never plays out of control he never, never. seems like never. he's making a, a bad decision when he's getting into the paint. So obviously the quiet 45 points from Jalen Brunson is one thing, but Josh Hart continues to be an, an absolute, uh, I, I don't want to say steal because we paid him in the off season, yeah. but he continues to be just, uh, you know, a, a, a guy who was born to be a Nick. I feel like, right. Yeah. Like yeah. he plays with that same sort of game that when you talk about smart Nick fans and appreciating what someone brings to the table that doesn't necessarily get the highlights in sports center gets the highlights on, on, on Bleach Report or House of Highlights, whatever. Josh Hart's that guy, man. Yeah. Like, I put out a tweet several weeks ago now, <laughs> yeah. and I think got like a million views, and I said, Josh Hart is the Carmelo Anthony of Draymond yes, Green. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> where, yes. 
he's a, he's an ultimate glue guy, but yeah. you know he plays with a little bit more of a of a scorer's flair, and he does pretty much everything that Draymond does. He gets rebounds, he pushes the offense. I think we all kind of knew he was a very good rebounder for his size. I don't think a lot of people knew how good of a playmaker he was right. as far as like getting guys wide open shots because he's he's HB Dive every time he gets the ball. Like he's going to the rack. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. It's, it's hard to stop him because he's deceptively strong and he makes the right decisions when he gets to the paint. So he's been amazing to watch this year. And in a time where you lose an all NBA all star forward in Julius Randle, who's a six nine behemoth who was a locomotive coming down the ramp or coming down to the you know to the paint. Who knew that you would get some of that supplemented by a guy who's a six five, guardish forwardish yeah. sort of player, and has held the fort, man. When Julius went down in February against the Miami Heat, I think the Knicks were in third place right now, and everybody was just saying, just hold the fort, just hold the fort. Right now, it is April or well, March fifteenth. Knicks are still in fourth place. Yeah. They've only went down a slot. I, I could say we could consider the fort held down. Uh, for the for the time being, so I think Josh Hart has been absolutely inconsequential to this uh, this Knicks run this season. No question, man. When he when he talking about holding down the fort and and give thanks for for a big January that this team had, man. Fourteen and two in January that also gave them a, a nice cushion here to kind of withstand some of the hits that they've been taking. But also the guys that have been playing have shown they've shown a lot of endurance, a lot of resiliency, and it just speaks to the overall culture of this team, the culture of the locker room. Obviously the Nova guys, you have Tibbs there. Everybody's locked in. Everybody's bought in. Talk about the Detroit guys in a little bit. We'll talk about them. A little bit. We'll, we'll stick to the good things. We'll stick to the good things. We'll stick to the good things. But you know, I, I, I got said, some. I got some. I got some questions. Yes, to yes. Ask well, you we got to talk. We'll, we'll talk about that. No, no question. <laughs> but you know, I was saying to say, this to Alex on last night's show. I was saying like, you know, the the benefit of having this Nova trio after they've been kind of gone through the rigors of the NBA. Now they're battle tested, and they brought that. Same winning mentality from Villanova and being well coached and, and solid pros, but now they've gone through the the ringer of the NBA and and they're bringing that to light here after you know bringing that experience and it's showing. When you talk about the decision making, you talk about be, making heads up plays, especially from Brunson and from Hart, DiVincenzo as well. It's just a great time to have these guys here together in the prime of their career. Yeah, I feel like you nailed it right in the head. Right, like I feel like it's different. When guys get into the league and obviously people are trying to get paid, people are trying to establish themselves in the NBA. These are, you know, guys who came from winning backgrounds and the NBA, the league pretty much told them, yeah, that's great. You know, but we don't necessarily see you guys as star players and see you guys as players you build franchises around. So they bounce around a little bit. They go and, and sort of understand the game now. And even even Jalen Brunson, a guy who was a Naismith player of the year, two time national champion. Yeah did everything you can ask the college player to do. And it was basically said, okay, here's a second round for you. And also you're probably going to be backing up this guy who we're going to build the franchise around Luka Doncic. Right. So they all kind of came with that chip on their shoulder and it adds to the fact that they play a style of basketball that is sustainable, especially in, in any era, right? Like they can shoot the ball, they can defend, they play hard and they rebound, yeah. right? Like rebounding is so key with these guys, because at the end of the day, you got to end possessions. You, you can stops. play all the defense in the world, but you know, Boardman gets paid for a reason. You got to end those possessions, and I yeah. think at those side, at that size, Divincenzo, Brunson, and especially Josh Hart are incredibly good rebounders. So I think when we look at that that lineup and see, you know, six four, six three, six two, six four, it doesn't necessarily it says six four, but they play a lot bigger than they are, right? Yeah. So, yeah. um. To, to add to the, to, to the Nova guys, man, I think the one thing that has absolutely been the biggest uh, takeaway when it comes to this Knicks team is that this year they've absolutely established a culture that doesn't need to be compromised in any way, shape, or form. The best compliment you can get about a team is hearing what other teams and other coaches say about 100%. them. And everybody knows when you're playing against the Knicks on the road, in the garden, wherever, you know they're going to play hard, you know they're going to play tough, you know they're going to play rugged. Yeah. And it's a this is a Knicks team, a style of team that this fan base has been dying for. And not only has this fan base been dying for it, I think the league has sort of been dying for yeah. a team that's tough, that has that sort of mentality 
of toughness. And what better place for that team to to grow than the city of New York, you know? So uh, the, the Nova guys, obviously, you can't take anything away from them and the, and the culture that they've sort of brought to this franchise. And I don't think enough is talked about uh, the great job that Tom Thibodeau has done as yeah. far as, like, getting the best out of these guys as well. These are all NBA pros that are all having career years under Tom Thibodeau, yeah. whereas – you know, the, 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 the narrative on him for years have been how, how much he's a detriment to people's careers right, and a right, detriment right. to people's injuries where, you know, Julius Randle, career year, Brunson, career year, Hart, career year, yeah. DiVincenzo, all these guys having the best years of their career under this guy. And I think it's because of the culture that's established and the style of play that's been established as well. So it's been awesome. Well, once again, we're talking to our guy, Cass. Salute we'll to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boys. CP and Cass on the ones and twos. Salute we'll to everybody on the grind, man. If you guys are on the lunchtime grind, throw a hashtag grind in the chat. We also got some franchise channel members in here. Reek Flair, salute my two cents, always in here. Jamaica Queens 22. Shout out to J Rose 712, BLW. I see you in here. Salute, salute, salute. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree with you on, on that tips front, man. Like, if you pull it back. And you just see, I mean, Julius, three-time All-Star on the Tibbs. Brunson, All-Star on the Tibbs. Quick when he was here, second and sixth man of the year. Uh, RJ RJ took some steps up. Mitchell Robinson took some steps up. You know, injuries be damned. Mitch has improved. He's become a much more disciplined defensive player for this team. How Isaiah Hartenstein has improved with this team. Never came into this team with with a, a, a reputation of being a defender. He was always, you know, mm-hmm. offensive scrapper. He can pass the ball nicely. He can shoot the three here and there. But nothing on the defensive side. Nothing on the defensive side whatsoever. And so you, you do have to give Tibbs a lot of credit. I do think they will reward him with a, with an extension of the bag in the offseason. And, uh, and it'll be well-deserved. Now, another story last night's game. Uh, OG Ananobi. <laughs> now, I'm mm-hmm. sure you were like all of us watching yes. him in this game, wincing. We're like, whoa, 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 what's that right there? What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. Now, yeah, a lot of nerves. Yeah. A lot of nerves the last night. <laughs> now, I, I was encouraged, you know, without being a doctor or orthopedist, I was encouraged when he came back into the game after wincing because then I'm just like, okay, maybe it's just routine soreness. Like, these guys couldn't right. be so reckless that they would just throw him out there and, and his shoulder's all messed up. And so mm-hmm. that is what we're hearing today, according to OG, according to Tom Thibodeau, routine soreness expected after the, the procedure that he had, and good news on that front because he was great last night for this team. The beautiful thing about Knicks fans and Knicks fan Twitter is everyone wants to be a doctor, but I think Knicks fans have actual <laughs> doctors that follow. So even before yeah, yeah. even before the buzzer yeah, went off, yeah. you had people talking about, okay, this is, uh, you know, it's going to be some routine soreness. <laughs> they took a little bit of the elbow chips off. Like, same thing with Jalen Brunson. Like, as when the, when the injury happened, when he went down against the Cleveland Cavaliers, yeah. before they even got back to oh. halftime, and we saw the clip, there was another doctor who pretty much diagnosed exactly Broke it all down. what yeah. happened. And... So it's crazy, man. Like Knicks, Knicks fans on social media, it, it, sometimes you get better analysis yeah. than waiting for you know whatever is going to come out of MSG. And, and Lord knows, I mean, I know just as much as anybody, and I think it's a good thing. You know, MSG and the Knicks organization have become Fort Knox, right? Like yeah. nothing's yeah. coming in, nothing's coming out. Yeah. You know, it's it's very it's very good fellas the way it's ran in there, right? Mm-hmm. Like which I love, right? Like, I remember where it was just a zoo about just anything and information and just wild accusations about everything that happened under uh, the Knicks organization. Where now, if somebody's hurt, we won't know. If somebody's coming back to recovering, we won't know until it's time to know. And I think that gives the Knicks a, a competitive advantage, and I think it puts uh, fans' uh, worries a little bit yeah. at ease as well. But at the same time, you know, Definitely gave me a little bit of cause to pause because I think OG and Anubi, uh, what is he, 14 and 2 now as a Nick on the last I, two games? I, oh, or something like that? Yes, 14, 14. 14 and 2. I mean, you could look at all the plus minuses. You can look at the fit. You can look at, uh, you know, his ability to at least put the ball on the ground, which I didn't think he had the ability to, but I think yeah. he's shown so far. The fact is, when OG's on the court, they win games, they play well, they, they, dominate. they play defense. They like, dominate, he's a man. dominant dominant defender and you know you really cannot replace that i think no. his first game you know i guess i think it was against the minnesota timberwolves yep, and just watching one of my favorite players to watch in the league anthony edwards just be completely flustered 
having to deal with yeah. OG and Anobi. I think everybody's antennas went up. I was like, oh, this is what he's bringing to the table. Like these are the type of guys you're gonna have to go through to at least get to where you want to get in, uh, you know, in the postseason. So once I saw Anthony Edwards get frustrated, I'm like, oh man, can't wait to see him against the Jason Tatum's of the world, the Jimmy Butler's of the world, the Giannis's of the world. Like those are the guys that give you got give the Knicks all the trouble in the world. Yeah. They're a set up point guard. They're set up power forward. You, Lord knows how much they love me some RJ Barrett and how much I wanted him to be that sort of lockdown defender. But if you're going to go through the East, you're going through at least two or three of those elite wing forwards. Yeah. And the Boston Celtics have two of them, right? Right, so, right. Uh, OG Adenobi is, is – is, is, he, he can't be even more valued uh, if it was even possible to do that, right? So the scoring, I always look at it as a bonus. The shooting, I always look at it as a bonus. His ability to just frustrate star wings in the Eastern Conference is going to be so key for this playoff run. So if the elbow soreness is just soreness and it's routine and it's surgery, cool, great, ice up, put some Ben Gay on and do whatever you got to <laughs> do. But we need you ready uh, for March, yeah, April, and yeah. May, man. Uh, his versatility is going to be crucial. He's absolutely transformed this team on the defensive end. When you look at the standings, Nick's a game up on the Magic 4-5 matchup. If that is a potential matchup there, you, you're looking at him taking Franz Wagner. I think he takes Franz Wagner completely out of this thing. He, he'll maybe draw some assignments on Paolo Boncaro. Uh, you got Pacers. It, it'll be the Siakam will be his assignment. Maybe he'll get some uh, action on, on Halliburton. If it's the Sixers, who the Knicks are three games up on, could be a maxi situation. So, you know, Miami Heat don't count them out. They're three and a half games back of the Knicks. One more game to play to finish out the season series. So that's Jimmy Butler. You know, maybe he gets a hero, Simon Hamihake. So, you know, you just see the way that when he's out there, things just completely grind to a halt for opposing offenses, man. You're shooting tougher shots. Then you have to contend with either DiVincenzo or McBride you know, being more ball hawks and, and with their help defense, you add precious to that mix. And this def mm -hmm. Knicks defense is uh, is looking pretty good. Now, they're going to get tested a little bit more against Sacramento, I would think. I think they benefited these last four games against playing offenses that just haven't been all that good. You know, Philly yeah. especially with no MB. So it's going to get tested, but uh, I like how he looks with this unit, man. Can't, can't wait to I see like that matchup strength. against Sacramento, though, because I think Precious Achua filled in admirably in OG Ananobi's defense. And DeMontis Sabonis has been playing lights out all year long. I think yeah. he's been a guy that I think has been severely overlooked this year. I don't think he was an all-star or anything like that, but he leads the league in triple-doubles, leads the league in double-doubles. Even when Julius Randle was healthy, those battles between Randle and Sabonis were always, always sort personal. of neck and personal. neck. Yeah, always personal, yeah. too. They always had those... It was always between one of those guys in the All-Star game, so you know they always took it personally. So I think it's going to be definitely a challenge, but I think if OG's good to go, um, even if he's not good to go, I have a lot of faith in Precious Achua and what, yeah. what he's shown since being uh, acquired by the New York Knicks to at least slow him down and, and uh, you know, at least – not necessarily keep him from scoring, but keeping him off the boards is key. Yeah. Like he grabs so many rebounds. He's an incredible playmaker. He's he's almost Jokic like in that effect and his ability to to really run the offense through him. De'Aaron Fox, obviously a blur in yeah. the offense, but you know uh, I, I, what I saw last night, which I'm hoping we'll we'll get to soon, is much more Deuce, a lot less Alec, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think Deuce has sort of. I'm looking forward to the challenge of Deuce McBride trying to stay in front of De'Aaron Fox and slow him down yeah. and really uh, take that challenge of, of being a, uh, the ball hawk yeah. on him. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a great game, man. And obviously, you know, you got Josh Hart. Steven Chendo was no slouch on defense. Any team that goes against this Knicks team, is, is, it's it's the opposite thought, right? Like yeah. before it used to be, well, what are the Knicks going to do about outscoring these people? Now it's like, no, 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 no. What are these guys going to do against these elite defenders of the New York Knicks who are just – holding people to their season lows and career lows every single night out. So, um, man, it's going to be really fun to watch. Uh, I love an ugly West Coast game, staying up late at night yeah, to like 10 yeah. p.m. Yeah, and, we were up till 2 last night, man. We were up oh, till yeah. 2 last night. So oh, yeah. um, It's going to be a good one, man. Yeah. I like the way the Knicks are set up for this, even without Julius Randle and Mitch yeah. to, to handle Sabonis. How, how do you feel about the Julius situation? It, it, you know, I, I feel like the opinions – uh, have been pretty polarizing amongst the fan base. You have some that say, yeah, I'm not worried. He'll be fine. And then you have others that are like, 
you know, what's the timetable? Like you said, it's Fort Knox over there. Nobody's saying anything. Still not yeah. participating in five on five contact, light contact, according to Tibbs. Still not cleared for physical contact. Where, where do you stand on Julius and his injury? Well, uh, anybody who's – I feel like I've watched every single Julius Randle possession since he's become a New York Nick. And the one thing you know about him is he's tough and he doesn't like to sit out, right? Like he plays through injury. And I'll never forget the face he made when he came up from that shoulder injury against the Miami Heat. Like you see him trying to sort of walk it off and shake it off. And he made a grimace of a look that I've never seen him make before. Like he was in legitimate pain. And I just remember – the days after the injury happened, just waiting to hear at least some sort of, you know, real diagnosis. We never really got like a true diagnosis on the shoulder. It was just yeah. like, all right, we're just going to either let it heal on its own or, you know, surgery repair it. And now I think just with the fact that he didn't opt for surgery and knowing that the Knicks are still in contention and still have a possibility to really make some noise in the playoffs, I think the Knicks are doing their best job of doing due diligence to make sure he does not they, they use him for games that they absolutely need him for right like i think i was hoping for probably mid-march for a julius randall return now i'd be happy if they hold him out until at least april and just get him for just this playoff stretch just so you know the game sort of slowed down a little bit not a whole lot of back-to-backs you can play a few games take a few days off do that type of stuff and then you get him right in the off season but it's definitely a little bit concerning because he he's going to need surgery eventually, right? right? And right. this is somebody that you're you're counting on offensively, counting on as a facilitator, counting on as a floor spacer, and just counting on as a force in, in the playoffs. So uh, at, the Knicks at full strength, I think the sky's the limit for them. But I just don't see them being full strength this year, even if Julius Randle does come back. It's going to be a compromised version of Julius Randle, who already has the ghost of playoff pass sort of like floating over his head as well. So I know we're all, you know, hopefully, hopefully for, you know, a full strength Knicks team, but I just yeah. don't see it this year. I, I think it'll it. be a version of them as a complete team, but full strength. I don't think we'll really see that until next season because of this injury. I, I agree with you. I'm with you 1000% on that. I don't see it. Um, and it's unfortunate because like you said, it's going to be another postseason where, you're going to be asking yourself, what if? When this thing is all yeah. said and done, you're going to be asking yourself, what if? What if yeah. you know, Julius didn't get hurt? Well, Where I mean, but to, but to leave it, to, but to be, you know, uh, a little bit optimistic, man, like obviously you see how good this Knicks team has been without Julius Randle. Yeah. And even I think a compromised version, I think even a 60% version of Julius Randle is somebody who helps you in this Eastern Conference playoffs because thankfully the front office did the due diligence about at least shoring up you know, offensively what you're losing with Julius Randle at full strength. So yeah. I think even just, a, you know, a, a, a compromised version of Julius still helps this Knicks team. Does it get them past the the Celtics and the Bucks of the world? I'm not necessarily sure about that. But, I mean, you never know. That's why they play the games. That's why they and play the games. A lot that can happen between now yeah. and April and May. So we'll, we'll see. Well said, man. CP the franchise and Cass on the ones and twos. Shout out to Kelvin Bell. In the chat says, I'm loving this interview and the message about being true to your passion and following your highest aspirations. Thank you. So shout out to Kelvin Bell. Shout out to Kaz. And yeah, that's what we're here for, man. Yeah, we want to talk Knicks. But when we have people as accomplished as Kaz and, and Monica McDonald, it's so early in their careers, we got to talk about it and pull the gems out and, and talk about those stories to inspire others, man. We will be irresponsible to use our platform for anything otherwise. So, um, yeah, great comment there. Salute to Kaz for the gems. And, and we're going to be going to really appreciate it, man. It really is. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Absolutely. And so to everybody on the grind. Okay, Kaz, it is that portion of the show, the fan mailbag portion, man. We got some good questions loaded up. I sent it to you already. You, you ready to go? I'm ready to go. And, and I'm it'll, ready to it'll, roll, man. it'll kind of answer some of the things that uh, we, we said we were going to get to anyway. So the first question is from uh andrew abrahams 109 i believe this is from twitter and andrew's question is hello guys i have a question uh what will be the playoff rotation when we are fully healthy assuming randall and robinson come back so i'll go i'll go to you kaz on that playoff rotation when julius and mitch come back I think I think the uh, the biggest questions is definitely the center position. Uh, I think I think Mitchell Robinson probably comes off the bench 
uh, in, in uh, relief of Isaiah Hartenstein. I think uh, even both when they're healthy, as good as Mitch Robinson is defensively, I don't think he gives uh, the Knicks what Isaiah Hartenstein does as a passer yeah. and as a um, – a second chance rebounder as well, and a little bit of a floor spacer. Yeah. So uh, I think you stay with Hartenstein as a starter. OG DiVincenzo, Brunson, obviously, but you know uh, the Josh Hart, Julius Randle, you know thing is, is probably going to come into question. You know, I don't think Julius Randle is going to log the the amount of minutes that he was getting pre injury. Yeah. But I do think he probably starts. I do think he comes in and you know he, he at least. He gives him like a hard four or five, and then he's probably the first or second, you know, substitution uh, for that game. And then, you know, you rely on, you know, the the equity that this team, uh, this Knicks, uh, these Knicks subs have built up in Julius Randle's absence. So the good thing about, you know, not being able to have Julius Randle play that many minutes or that long is that Josh Hart is very comfortable playing that power forward position and playing heavy minutes, yeah. obviously. Um, Boyan Bogdanovic, he's been sort of up and down, but I do think if you put him in a position where he's playing against mostly reserves and not necessarily going up against other teams' best starters, um, I think we'll see better versions of him. Uh, Miles McBride, I believe, has has really become a revelation. He's the last of the tips, kids, the last yeah, of the last the of the draft Could you believe that? Could you believe that? Yeah. He's the last of the I, I would believe right? it, actually. Like, yeah. see, the way he plays, like, if there was any one of those guys that Tip was going to hold on to, I think it was going to be him. He's a guy who came from the Bob Huggins coaching tree, plays defense. He's become a better, uh, you know, creative shooter as well off the bounce. I mean, I didn't know he could shoot off the bounce like way, that. Way better, and, much better extremely efficient in that in that regard so i think i think that's where the rotation lies um i think alec burks last night uh he's been up and down ever since his return yeah. to the new york knicks but I, I feel like yesterday could have been one of those last straws uh yeah. with with alec right like i think shake milton the shake milton pickup was like the first sort of uh you know alarm that okay maybe this Alec burke thing isn't working out as best as we hope and then, you know, he comes in the game, he has five points, but he just comes out chucking, like shoots every shot that he gets his hands on yeah. and then has a pretty ugly turnover where he slaps the ball and doesn't run back on defense. And then we don't see him for the rest of the that game, you know, the and then, ball. you know, Deuce comes in, balls out. Um, and to be fair, he should ball out. He's been with his next team since he was drafted. He knows everything in this place in and out. Yeah. And, you know, talking to Monica McNutt, he basically said the only difference between, you know, then and now is just opportunity. He felt like he could have been doing this as a rookie, you know, yeah. and, and great that he has that confidence. But I think guys like McBride are going to step up when it's when it's crunch time. I think, you know, Bogdanovich, even though he's kind of been up and down, you know, I think he's a guy who can get streaky. And we've seen him at least have some decent moments as a Nick so far, as opposed to to Burks, but at the end of the day, this this whole thing boils down to the backcourt of Brunson and DiVincenzo. Uh, I think DiVincenzo sort of slowed down a little bit as far as his scoring output and his ability to to, to light it up from downtown. He was leading the league at one point uh, as far as three-point makes and, and percentage and, and volume, but I think if Dante, it's good that he's, he's, he's sort of slowing down now, but if he sort of ramps back up uh, leading into the playoffs, I think that backcourt can take the Knicks as far as anybody, uh, and, you know, and adding an OG and an Ubi and, and Randall, those guys are going to get the lion's share of yeah. the minutes. You know, rotation yeah. slow down in the playoffs, but the, but the backcourt is settled. OG, Randall, and Hartenstein are healthy and good to go. And Mitch is spotting you 15 minutes of, of hell as a defensive backup center. And he can't, you know, I think Precious Achua has made – a great case to get some prime playoff minutes this yeah. year as well. So um, the Knicks, their depth is going to be their biggest key. But as we Big know, in the playoffs, rotations shorten up. So you know, yeah, you gotta you gotta produce, or you're gonna be sitting. At full strength, I go with the the traditional. If you're saying full strength, meaning you're getting you know a better than seventy five percent, Julius Randle. Then at full strength, you go with your traditional starting five. With Brunson, DiVincenzo, you have OG, you have Randall, and you have iHeart. I'm starting iHeart, not Mitch. I like how the offense is flowing with iHeart. I just think they're just playing very well with him, and I don't want to upset that. Off the bench, obviously, Josh Hart, easy six man. He's going to be first guy off. 
I got to get Deuce in there for the efficiency and the defense. He's going to be the next guard off. And he's playmaking a lot better, too. That's, that's been another yeah. uh, revelation in his game. He's playmaking a lot more consistently. And then I would slot in Mitch. Now, there's going to be uh, there's going to be occasions, as you said, where they're going to need Bogdanovich to be a catch-and-shoot corner three-point shooter at, at the very least. And I think there's going to yeah. be situations based on matchups where you're going to need that. You just don't know who's going to be misfiring in the playoffs. It could be DiVincenzo. It could be Deuce. You just don't know. I'm, I'm trusting Brunson, right? We've seen the sample size. Mm-hmm. He's a dog. It doesn't matter the stage. He's, he's ready. A, he's proved himself to be a playoff rider. He's ready. He's, so he's ready, yeah, yeah. right? So, mm-hmm. But we don't know about Dante. Don't know about Deuce. So I think there's going to be opportunities where you're going to need Bogdanovich, but it's going to have to be in select spots because he's going to be a target on the defensive end as well. So I think when you fortify him with a OG, a heart, a Precious, I think he'll do a lot better in limited minutes. And then I got to factor in Precious here because you just don't know a Julius in terms of his minutes. And yep. also, and also, Mitch, how do, how does he ramp up? He's going to be a lot closer to return than Julius is, but you know they say with big man, typically takes him a month to get back into shape. And so right now, you got Precious. He's averaging twelve and and damn near ten in his last yep. twelve games. Uh, he's going to make a case there. Burks is out of the rotation right now. <laughs> I'm selling. I'm selling my shares in the Burks Hive. Yeah. We had a good uh, run. Burks Hive, it's been a pleasure being your leader for the last couple of years <laughs> when I told you we needed this guy back. Yo, I love me I love me some big money, A.B. I Don't love me some me big wrong. money, man. I, I, I love them. I love them. But, you know, maybe this is one of those things where, you know, you got to go their lowest before you Bro. finally raise up. But I'm – I, I've seen too much of good dudes basketball for me that, to continue to see Burke struggle. That like stretch this. in the second quarter was like played like a blooper reel for me, bro. I, yeah. said, <laughs> I, said, I said, nah, man. I said, nah, G. It's over. Nah, bro. It's over with. I'm selling my shares, bro. It was oh a blooper God. reel. Brick after brick after brick, and then he flops on the floor. They, he, he's just he's looking overmatched. The, the tunnel vision, he doesn't fit anything that they're doing out there. Yeah, uh, like I think I would I would even be you know we saw you know I got I got I, I seen every possession of his during that pandemic season and, and even in 2021 and yeah he was a good shooter but what really made him stand out was he was a playmaker too like yeah. he was able to get uh, easy buckets for like a Nerlens Noel like get easy buckets for Julius and RJ and all these guys and that's what made him efficient and that's what made him uh, you know a better scorer because you had to play him. For his, uh, you know, ability to play make. And last night, I don't think he, I don't think he passed the ball once. Bro. I think every time he got the ball, it, was, he it never, went up. He never does. <laughs> and, he never and it does. It was just, it was, it was bad to see. He never man. does. So never I mean, does. you know, I love AB as a guy. I think you know, but right now, he, he's breaking in case of emergency at this point. If somebody gets hurt or yeah. some, you know, the rotation gets messed up, that's the only time I want to see him right now. Unfortunately. Put him in the trunk. <laughs> Put him in the what? <laughs> Put him in the trunk. Uh, that sound bite has uh, reverberated worldwide for Knicks Nation, man. It, it, it hits home. It hits home. It, you know, just is what it, it is. Just is what it is. Yeah. So on to on to our second question on that topic. Yeah. Good segue here because the next one is from Rella One K. Shout out to Rella One K. And their question is from Twitter. It says, "Now that we've seen a sample size of Boyan on Burks, is the Grimes trade still a win?" Feels like we gave up a fair player, p- fair playoff defender for a very streaky vets. Can Tibbs get the Pistons stink off of these guys in time? Your thoughts? Uh, I'll tell you this, man. Alec Burks has been so rough to watch. Anytime he's playing, I have to go and Google the Detroit Pistons. I'm like, is Quentin Grimes killer right now? Yeah, like, is, right. Is, is What's going on? Doing something? You're looking I'm to like, see if I... your ex is doing better than you, man. You're looking to see I gotta that, go man. Look. I got to go look. But, I mean, to be fair, like, Grimes has been hurt. He hasn't played as much as well. Yeah. Fournier is still Fournier. And I think last night he looked at, like, five minutes or seven minutes or something like that. He hasn't played a whole lot. So, I'm not really – I'm not willing to say this is a, a fail yet uh, because I think in addition to what you're getting from Bojan and Burks as players, their contracts are very team-friendly as well, right? Like, so if you're still looking towards the future, you're still looking towards uh, getting a lot of cap space to get another one of those, you know – uh, can't miss stars or, or, or you know guys that'll just help the team uh acquiring those guys is is a benefit yeah. um but even as bad as they've been i still believe boyan and his ability to at least spread the floor out a little bit right. um right. Is, is a bit of a win right like quentin grimes came in with the reputation of a shooter and you know sometimes he would look like it and the form 
looks as textbook as possible, but yeah. I've seen many nights where he was just not hitting anything He's and breaking. getting wide open looks. And Evan breaking. Fournier just completely fell out of favor with Tibbs in that rotation. So I think you're at least getting bodies. You're at yeah. least getting people that can get some rest for Brunson and Hart and DiVincenzo at the very, very least. That yeah. being said, it's 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 rough seeing uh, Brooks kind of go through this because I feel like there were times during that 2020-2021 season where you could argue Brooks was their third best player on the team, right? Yeah, like yeah. probably their best, you know, point guard, unfortunately. I mean, Derrick Rose had his, his sort of renaissance that season, but Alec Brooks was sort of a surprise, especially in the fourth quarter, where he was among the, the league leaders in fourth quarter scoring that yeah. season, which was insane to think about uh, how he's played now. So um, I don't think they've been finessed quite yet. I still think, you know, getting Bogdanovich, a guy who – out of all the four players that are moved around, is still probably the most proven in the league, has already proven himself at the 20-point score. And even as a Nick, even though he's had some bad games, he's definitely had some moments where, you know, his his offense has sort of helped the Knicks to win. So yeah. I'm not necessarily there yet. Quentin Grimes is on the Detroit Pistons, a team that really isn't going anywhere, averaging like 30 points or something like that. Then I'd be like, okay, maybe. Yeah. Like, if he was – if he was given any – if he was giving – production anywhere close to what like rj barrett is given the toronto raptors or you know emmanuel quickly was given to the toronto raptors even in losing efforts yeah. then i might think about that but i, I don't think we're there yet i, I yeah. still think bogey is going to be you know uh, a benefit this coming playoffs yeah i agree i think um you just you just never know who becomes a playoff hero man all, all it takes is knocking down a couple of shots and changing momentum in the game it doesn't mean that you got to go out there and score 20 you, you know your 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 season average it just means yeah. You get the opportunity. Don't don't embarrass the team and be a plus. But so, but I, I think the, the the jury's still out on the trade. Grimes had no future here. He was unhappy with his role. The Knicks were not going to bring him back. You can't pay everybody, and that this trade was indicative as such. The Knicks. I tell fans all the time when they evaluate this trade, the Knicks legitimately had the assets to go out there and get anybody they wanted at the trade deadline. This was not an all-in move on this year move. This was let's try to get a little bit better at the same time keep our cap flexibility for the next big move. And that's what this is yep. about. It's still about the next big move. This team is still in progress. And so it's not the end-all, be-all. Burks and Bogdanovich are not here for the future. They're here just for right now. Burks is going after this season. The Bogdanovich contract is where the money lies and where the question marks are in terms of what are they going to use, how are they going to use that to get better. That's mm. when you'll know if this deal – was great or not is how do they flip that Bogdanovich contract into the next thing? And then on top of that, you know, depending on what they do with the draft picks this year, they're going to have two draft picks coming into into this draft. Hey, maybe they find a Grimes replacement. Maybe they find another wing, another Peyton Watson type of player. I think in it's, addition it's to that, man, you got to make sure you, you got to pay OG and Anobi too, you right? Pay OG. Like he's gonna, somebody got to pay him. So yeah. you know that's that's that, there's a lot there's a lot of decisions that they're gonna have to make this offseason when it comes to that. Absolutely, man. So to everybody in the chat once again, hit that thumbs up on free boy CP and Kaz on the ones and twos, the mailbag edition of KFTV a lunchtime edition of the show, man. Salute to everybody that is in here joining us. Uh, we got our franchise channel members in the chat. Salute to you guys as well. Thanks for the support as always. And remember to support our sponsors, man. I'm just trying to bring up my sponsor graphic. Where's my sponsor? Oh, you got to shout out the sponsors. We, we got to we gotta, we gotta take care of the sponsors, man. We definitely got to take care <laughs> of the sponsors. And the sponsor of today's show is Manscaped, fellas. You know it, man. The number one men's grooming tool above and below the waist. Go to manscaped.com. Use our code KFTV for an instant for 20% off plus free shipping definitely salute to our guys over at manscaped always holding us down and fellas you guys know saint patrick's day is on the way man so this year don't just chase rainbows make your own pot of gold and groom your little leprechaun with the leaders in below the kilt care say goodbye to your clover forest with manscapes lawnmower 5.0 and let your confidence shine bright, man. Embrace the luck of the Irish and join 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com and use our code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. All right. That was another classic uh, CP the Franchise Manscaped read. <laughs> go, out, go out and get Fire. it. So to our friends. Fiery. Fiery. All right. Next, next question 
on the docket here, and this is from let me let me pull it up here. This is from salute to him. Bodega Mayor, 4943. I believe this was on uh, our YouTube. Says, my question, are we going to get another Fantastic Voyage video this season? The vid from two years ago was epic. This one would be even better. So, salute to him. He's, he's talking about Fantastic Voyage, uh, the documentary that uh, that we made with the Rhyme Animal Chuck D. Salute to the Rhyme Animal Chuck D. who produced that documentary, basically trailing uh, the journey of Knicks Fan TV and other Knicks fans content creators and, and how they – built their platforms up, a lot of that which came during the pandemic. Uh, great documentary. Make sure you guys check it out on the channel. Fantastic Chuck voyage. D, man. Shout Salute out him. to the Ryan Manor. Real, real deal, D, Nick man. He was in there with us. He was in there with us late night last night for post game. Never misses a show. And he's always locked in. So salute to Chuck, as always. Okay, next question up. Oh, this is from T-Fed, L-Man1 from Instagram. Who is your least favorite Nick? Mm. Oh gosh, uh, are, are we going? Are we going right now? Or are I we mean, going all time? Just, just or? pick pick one of the thousand. You know, just just pick one. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'll always, I'll always, forever. It's always on site for Andre Bargnani, bro. Mm, okay, <laughs> forever, yeah, forever, yeah. forever. Yeah, it's on site for Andre Bargnani. I know it's through no fault of his own. But anytime yeah. I see him, anytime I see that picture of him in the air uh, about to, like, crush his career and dreams and get that injury, that just sidelined not just the Knicks season that year, but, you know, the yeah. Knicks' fortunes for the next several years. Uh, I think of him. I think of Masai Ujiri. And I was just getting yeah. absolutely fleeced by the Toronto Raptors and, and needing literal years to recover from that. Yeah. So uh, I think Bargnani is definitely at the top of my list of least favorite Knicks uh, of all time, unfortunately. Had, I see. Had, I saw the vision. I see what they yeah, were trying to do. Yeah. Just wasn't. Had, wasn't Clyde, had Clyde jumping out his socks, man. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> the iconic no, I've call. Never seen, the no, iconic call from Clyde, Clyde man. Getting Clyde tight. Is, right. Is, that is a telltale sign yeah. that you are not yeah, it's bad. for the garden. Bro. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> it was bad. Um, I'm going to go with, of the millions of possibilities, I'll go Jared Jeffries. Oh, I'll go Jared, Jared Jeffries, <laughs> man. Oh, my goodness. He was, Listen, at least Jared Jeffries played hard. He did. Right? He did. He did. He played hard. In fairness to him, he, he did play hard, but he was brought in to yeah. be like the Swiss Army knife. He's going to defend everybody. He's going to pass a oh. ball. He's, he's going to do everything like he did at Indiana. And, like – Oh my God! It it was just a nightmare, Food. man. Every single night. Food man. every time. Every single night. How many ISOs that I? If I had a dollar for every ISO I saw in Jared Jeffries, ah, <laughs> that's brutal. Season. It was bad news. Brutal. Man. God. Brutal. Brutal, man. So uh, and, and he stayed for relatively far away from the game, man. Nobody hears from him. Doesn't he? Doesn't have his own podcast. He's just fishing and chilling, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, he's got. He got the life, bro. You get. You get the NBA millions and get off the grid, man. Get I do the same there. thing, brother. Yeah. I do the same thing. Out of there. <laughs> Shout out to Jared Jeffries, man, and uh, yeah, that was a, that was a brutal <laughs> era. That was a brutal era. All right, next one. Yeah. At full strength, what do you guys think our closing lineup will be in the playoffs, guys? Closing mm. lineup in the playoffs. This is from Johncito EH70Q from uh, YouTube. Man, okay, so if healthy, closing rotation. I think you got to go obviously Brunson yeah. and DiVincenzo as your backcourt. I think there's going to be some opportunities where Josh Hart is going to be closing some games, man. I think, you know, his ability to rebound at his size, his ability to defend, knock down shots and create, um, there's going to be a lot of times, especially depending on the matchup. I think the the Celtics are probably the only, the only team where I'm like, maybe Josh Hart doesn't finish that lineup because they're just so big uh, at every position. But if they're going up against like the Heat or the Magic or the Pacers or – you know, uh, gosh, I, I don't even know who else is left out there. But any of those three teams, I think you go with four guards, right? I think mm. you go Hart, DiVincenzo, Brunson, and then, you know, maybe you throw an OG if mm-hmm. he's healthy, mm-hmm. and maybe Randall as a small ball five. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're going up against the, the Miami Heat, I think, you know, I think a Randall – Bam matchup sort of matches up well. Yeah. I think OG is versatile enough to guard anybody defensively and spread the court out as well. Um, the Hartenstein, Mitch are in foul trouble. I'd still rather have Hartenstein over OG or over Hart at that big man position. But 
I think when it comes to closing lineups, you want five guys that can guard anybody, five guys that can hit free throws, five guys that can handle the ball, and, you know, five guys that are experienced. So I've always loved – there were certain lineups during that win streak where Julius Randle and and OG Anunoby were your your front court, and you had DiVincenzo Hart and Brunson as your backcourt, and they spread teams out. You give Brunson a ton of space to operate, and obviously we all know what he can do with his footwork when he's got a one-on-one battle. Uh, if DiVincenzo is knocking him down from deep and Josh Hart is slashing to the rim, you got a whole lot of paint and space to worry about, to work with. And OG Ananobi and Julius Randle, if they're both hitting the outside shots, good luck defending that. So yeah. at the end of the day, give me Brunson leading that that four and three and a half guard lineup with Julius Randle as a small ball five. Interesting, I- interesting indeed, man. I'm gonna go with, I'll I'll go Brunson at the one. OG Randall Iheart. Like, I'll go traditional starting five, but I think closing, it depends on what you need. I think you could go offense, defense with Dante and Hart. When you have, if you have Hart out there to two with OG, uh, I think they become more switchable. You mm-hmm. know, he has that versatility. OG has that versatility. Rebounding as well, I think, will be critical. Like, if they're trying to maintain a lead in crunch time, I think you could make a case to, to go with Hart. Just to get those stops, help him get those stops. He plays bigger than DiVincenzo does and is able, will be able to snatch those rebounds down. And then, yep. especially if he's hitting, if he's knocking down those shots, which is going to be key, especially in the half court for him. To me, I think he's going to, that's going to be the X factor for him in the playoffs because remember last year, yeah. Miami wasn't even respecting what he was doing out there. So if he's, if he's in a game where he's in a groove and he's knocking down his threes, I'm definitely closing with Hart. Definitely. Yeah. I, I think Josh Hart just gives you so many. I mean, how many second. Second possessions and third possessions that he just give you last night. Right, he does it all right. the time. And those those offensive rebounds, those second possessions are backbreakers in the playoffs. Right. It feels like, you know, these are guys that are playing – everyone's playing 40 minutes at this point, right? Yeah. And you have to defend another 24 seconds. It feels like an hour yeah. sometimes. And Josh Hart at that size and his ability and his nose for the ball, a thing you just can't teach really, you know, just yeah. being able to just be a magnet to the orange – I like him in a lot of closing lineups. Now, yeah. if you're going up against the Celtics and you got Porzingis there at the center, you got Drew Holiday as a big guard, Dirk Wright as a big guard, and then you got, uh, you know, uh, Tatum and Brown as your forwards, then maybe you definitely lean towards Hartenstein as the big uh, yeah. guard in Chris Ass Porzingis. But, man, those first three games against the Boston Celtics, I did not like the matchup. I hated it. Porzingis and and it, Mitch, bro. man. He was, he, was, he was cooking Mitch, man. Yeah. I got to give it to him. I hate it. And, uh, you know, I think there'll be times where if Randall is at the five or Hart is at the five, I think that he's a little bit better equipped to uh, handle Mitch. And I think, you know, as, as much as I love Mitch defensively, at least I Hart gives you something offensively. He gives you at least a little bit of touch around the rim. He can at least back down Porzingis a little bit. Yeah. And one thing Porzingis has really taken advantage of in all of these matchups against, as the Celtics were going up against other teams, I think he leads the league in post ups because he just gets yeah. so yep. many mismatches. Right. In, the, in in that in that lineup, and he's seven foot three, and he has the feathery touch. I mean, we just kind of who are we talk about. We know Porzingis inside yeah. and out, right? Yeah. So yeah. we know what he's capable of even as the third option for this team. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would love to see him. I mean, the good thing about the Knicks is that they have big bodies that they can throw out Porzingis where he's not going to take advantage of those big box outs. And I think, man, as even though the Celtics did sweep the series against the New York Knicks, uh, they, haven't, they haven't faced this version of full the strength. Knicks yet. They haven't faced at least something close to a full-strength Knicks team and we've only seen Porzingis uh, take advantage of that mismatch against uh, Mitchell Robinson. So uh, outside of that team, I like that small ball lineup against the Bucks, the Magic, the Haw- uh, the Heat, uh, and, and any, uh, anyone else of those guys. Yeah, true indeed, man. CP I guess the Sixers, too, if, if Embiid yep. is coming back. But well, who knows what, what's happening with him. CP the franchise and Kaz on the ones and twos. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up on the feed, boys. All right, a couple more here, uh, Kaz, as we go forward. Let me yes, uh, let me just pull it up. I got close and line up. Okay, this next one is from uh, Haitian Prince Ray on Instagram. Shout out to Haitian Prince Ray. What type of star or superstar will you take for the Knicks in the summer of 2024? Which star or superstar are you taking on the Knicks next season? Oh well, next, uh, I mean, season, sorry, this off season. 
if we're talking free agents, I don't think the I think the cupboard's a little bare as far yeah. as free agency. I think the Knicks, if they're going to go after a star, it has to be by trade. Uh, but you know, I mean, you're gonna have to pay OG and Anobi, so that's that sort of already limits what you, you got to do. Uh, there's the Paul George out there possibly, but I don't think he's leaving LA. I think, you know, with the new arena being built and everything going on and the Clippers, I think he's just sort of biding his time to sort of sign that extension and, yeah. and stay in Los Angeles. Um, there was a time where I was like, you know what? I wouldn't hate, I wouldn't hate LeBron. I wouldn't hate <laughs> LeBron story coming to, coming to New York city. I still think if, if he was to ever leave LA, which I don't think is likely at all. Yeah. But if he was to leave L.A., man, do you see the way he gets excited watching D'Angelo Russell ball out? Yeah. You see how excited he gets? Anytime I see that, I'm like, oh, you like you like that? You like what D'Angelo <laughs> Russell does? <laughs> Jalen Brunson does that <laughs> every Brunson. single night. Right, right. <laughs> Brunson does that every single night, right? Julius Randle's there, you know. I, I, I Listen. I know he I know he, he broke our hearts. I know he broke our hearts in New York, right? But if something were to happen where, you know, I, again, I don't foresee him leaving L.A., but if he were to leave LA and he does look like he's still got at least three or four years left in him, I would not mind having LeBron James plugged right into this lineup mm. as your small forward with, you know, and mind you, you're not really losing anybody, right? Like yeah. you might have to pay OG Ananobi, but you could plug in LeBron into a lineup of Hartenstein, Randall, Brunson, and DiVincenzo. And that is a championship winning lineup right there. Now, do you got $50 million to pay for that? Who knows? And I'm sure it's there's duckage. ways you could maneuver around that. But if you're talking about getting a superstar in free agency next year, I think there's too much, too many hoops to jump through as far as trade is concerned. But as far as free yeah. agency, that's the guy. Like that's the person that you try and and lure away from Los Angeles. And I think New York is the only place, the only platform. I mean, he's got an office right down the street over here in Spring Hill. Yeah, like Spring Hill. he's got businesses out here. Like. This is the only place that I think could even have a remote shot at pulling him away from Hollywood uh, in New York City because I think the Knicks are better equipped for the future. They have the draft picks. They have the players. They have the money. And I'm just talking free agency, just free agency, and people who might be available. He hasn't really fully committed to being a Laker yet. He's said all the right things. He's done all the right things. You see him yucking up with GD yeah. Bus, and yeah. they yeah. all look like the relationship is great and all. But in the in a wild situation where a lot could happen between now and the end of the year, and maybe he doesn't want to be in LA anymore, I would not mind him being a New York Knicks next for the, to, to wow. end his career. As far as who's available, I mean, you know, you never know who's going to be that disgruntled star. As they say, as you look at these teams across the league, like you know, I don't see Phoenix abandoning ship just yet. On their experiment with Ishbia there, I think they they will pull they will you know go through this thing full steam ahead. I don't see anything with Giannis or Dame. I don't see it. Well, I I've been seeing this guy the the whole time, and I still think that uh, it's Donovan Mitchell. I, I still think it's yeah. Donovan Mitchell. I think they try to try to get him again. He's going into another year into his contract. He hasn't committed to Cleveland. You've seen reports out there that that he could. I don't believe it. I think once they head for another playoff heartbreak, he's going to ditch them. And, and come home as he's wanted to do forever. Yeah. And they try to get him yeah. already. You know, let, let's uh, – he, he's already he's already here starting his off season. You know, it's March. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah. he'll, he'll, he'll probably be throwing the first pitch out at, at City Field for Mets opening day <laughs> and, and then go fly back to Cleveland to go play that night. So, I, I just yeah, I just yeah. think it's I think, it's, I think I just think the it's last, I think that's the last domino of, of falling when it comes to the Knicks being a real – uh, a championship contender. Yeah. You're not a real championship contender until you make a move that franchises hate you for. Yeah. And yeah. I think that would be it, right? Like, yeah. getting Donovan Mitchell finally, you know what I mean? Having Cleveland just sort of hate the guy. I mean, Cleveland's used to having stars leave them. You know, yeah, right, not really. Right. You know, it, it kind of happens. And I think that would be the, the – I think right now the Knicks are in the, you know, they're in the fun stage of a contendership, right? They're, yeah. they, there's not real championship sort of uh, expectations. But they play a great brand of basketball. They have first-time all-stars. They got young players. You know what I mean? They have room to grow. It's not until they get that superstar free agent or or superstar via trade where the rest of the league can have a good reason to hate you that you truly arrive at the championship contender. Yeah. And I think Bob Mitchell might be that, man. I, I love, you know, 
I love what I've seen with the matchup uh, with the with the lineup of DiVincenzo and and Brunson, mm-hmm. and I love the Villanova connection. And as much as I love the Villanova connection, what I also love is that two guards, six four and under, can work right. And as much as DiVincenzo is, is as great as he is, he's not a Donovan Mitchell, and that is uh, somebody that you could put into that starting lineup and elevate that team into a whole nother level. So I, I agree with you with Mitchell on the off season, as far as a trade is concerned. I think he's the, he's the guy for them. I'm not really, obviously don't want Embiid. Don't yeah, want, you I know, know uh, I think Giannis is, is pretty locked in, in, in Milwaukee. Um, but yeah, I think Donovan Mitchell might be the, the, the person job, not just fits as a player, but I think timeline his career growing in New York, still very young. I think he fits perfectly. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. My guy Marco checking in from Romania. Salute to Marco. Salute to Lawrence Smith, man. Franchise channel members. Where are you guys checking in from? Throw your cities, throw your state, or throw your country in the chat. Let us know where you guys are checking in from, and we will shout you guys out. Okay, final one here, Kaz. Great show so far. Final one. Appreciate you having me, man. Final one on the Fan Mailbag Show. And, and uh, it's kind of along the lines of uh, what we've been talking about here. But we're going to play a little fantasy basketball here because the question is from B. Mora. Shout out to B. Mora out there in Hawaii checking in on the KFTV YouTube. Or he might have been submitted via Twitter. But anyway, the question is, what is your perfect starting four to surround Jalen Brunson with? But you can only add one all-star. You can only have one all-star along with Brunson. What do you think? Wow. What do you think? Yo, so, okay. I think the way Jalen Brunson plays, right, he has elite footwork. Yeah. He has the ability to get two feet in the paint every single time, every single night, right? So I feel like the perfect sort of all-star to play alongside him would be a guy with similar insane footwork, and it's just kind of a cheat right here. I'm going to go with Jokic, right? Like, as, as great as Jamal Murray is, uh, I think Jalen Brunson is a, a, a notch better, has played a notch better. He's been uh, reliable health-wise. He's been able to stay on the court. And I think you don't necessarily need somebody who's like this explosive sort of just up and down sort of big man to play with uh, Jalen Brunson. And and the, the beautiful thing about that is Julius Randle is kind of like that, right? Like, yeah. Nikola Jokic is a triple-double machine, but I think as far as big men are concerned, the only people in the league that are averaging 25-10 and over five assists over the last three seasons are Giannis, Jokic, Embiid, and Randall, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. there's a reason why it works, because they play a level of basketball that, that spreads the floor, but also, you know, they're very good as far as spreading the ball around. Jokic is a cheat code because I feel like he can play with anybody in the league. So you give me Jokic as your big man. You give me Brunson at point guard. You're going to need somebody to stretch the floor uh, as a shooter, I would say, and mm-hmm. slasher. And he can't be an all-star. Man, I think, like, am I bugging if I say, like, Grayson Allen or somebody mm-hmm. like okay. that? Like, okay. a, a guy who's leading the league in, in, in three-point shooting, could play the defense a little bit scrappy, mm-hmm. just an, just enough annoyance to, to really get under somebody's skin. Yeah. Um, I think you'd need, like, a slashing small forward two-way guy. Um, okay, you could only do one all-star, all right? So I'm, I'm, I'm saying maybe... And, and everybody in the chat, throw, throw your full fives in the chat. So after Kaz goes and after I go, we, we can see. Throw your full fives in the chat. Brunson, one all-star, and three other players. Go ahead, Kaz. I like, um, I like dude from Minnesota. Um, Jaden McDaniels. Okay, okay, yeah, like, that'd be a nice. I like, I like that'd his, be a nice. He's, he's rangy. He can spread the floor a little yeah. bit. He plays incredible defense. He's sort yeah. of like in the OG and Anobi mode, but he's younger as well. Yeah. Um, and then I guess at uh at power forward, man, give me. I guess you can give somebody who's a fringe all star. Sabonis was an all star this year. Does that count? <laughs> right. I, I was wondering is he, is he saying is he saying like you know career all star or just all star okay. this year? I want you Sabonis. I want you Sabonis. But um, you know what? Give me. Mm, 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 mm. Man, I mean, I'll, uh, 
That's that's tough. That's tough. Okay, I I like uh, give me give me Franz Wagner, man. Give me mm. Franz Wagner from from Orlando, a guy okay. who's on the rise, who could be an all star one day. Maybe an Alperin Shingun, you know what Ooh, I mean? Another guy who could be an all star. That would be ferocious, right there. One of these guys, you know. I just like with a guy like Brunson, man. Um, I think he's just a half court maestro, right? Yeah. Like he's not one of those guys that are just getting up and down the court on some Steph Curry, Russell Westbrook uh, in this prime sort of yeah. stuff, Derrick Rose in his prime sort of stuff. He's a meticulous just surgeon in the half court. So give me surgeons in the half court mm. with him. So I would go Jokic, Shangoon, um McDaniels, Grayson Allen, Bronson as my okay. five. All right, all right. What do you guys think of the chat, man? Rate Kaz is five in the chat. One being trash, five being facts. Let me know what you guys <laughs> think in there, man. We got a Rate Kaz's uh, lineup in the chat. All right, here's where I'm going, man. I, I went through this okay. like a couple of times. I, I even like erase names on here. <laughs> names that I liked, and then I was like, nah, we got to win the championship. I'm getting old. Okay. All right, okay. So, all right, so obviously we got Brunson at the one. Now, at the two, I saw some good candidates in there. People said Mikhail Bridges, bro. You missed Mikhail Bridges. Not an all-star yet. Mikhail no, Bridges. True, true. Mikhael yeah, Bridges. Golly, I forgot. All right. I How, like that. However, I'm bypassing Mikhail Bridges, even though that's my guy. <laughs> I'm going with, because I think he has way more offensive upside, J-Dub, Jalen Williams, OKC. Oh, I like him a lot. Three-level scorer. Steal. Defender, 7-2 wingspan, playmaking ability. I'm going with J-Dub at the two, man. I'm going with That's J-Dub the type of dude I hope the Knicks can steal with one of these zillion draft picks that yeah, they have, yeah, right? Like, yeah. find a guy in the rough like a J-1. J-Dub. You got a million draft picks. One of them got a hit. J-Dub, <laughs> you know? So so I'm going yeah, with him. Like that. I'm going with him. Having another outstanding year after a successful rookie campaign. At the three, I'm keeping the dog here, man. OG Ananobi. Yeah, I, I've seen it. You add more wingspan, you add more defense, three point shooting efficiency from the corners. I'm I'm keeping OG here, so that's that's OG at the three, at the four. Not an all star yet, but will be a perennial all star. Wemby, I'm going with Victor. Oh Wemby yeah, Gama. come on, Are you kidding yeah, me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that guy, yeah. I'm, right, go, yeah. I'm going. I'm yeah, going Wemby, man. All right. And then my co all star at the five. I'm going Jokic. So there you go. I got wingspan, I got defense, I got footwork, I have transition ability, I have playmaking ability. The one-two game between Brunson and Jokic alone is going to be Hall of Fame worthy. That's better than Stockton. Wemby and Jokic on the front court together is scary oh and hilarious goodness. to watch. Right. I wait to see right, right. <laughs> yeah, I think okay. that could win a chip, man. Brunson, that was definitely a chip. Jalen Williams, a chip. it's future-proof. It's got some, some years in terms of the window. You got Brunson, Jalen Williams, OG, Jokic, Wemby, or Wemby Jokic. I think that's and Brunson would actually thing. give Wemby the ball too. Right. Which is right. In San Antonio, yeah, right. nah, that is an incredible fob. I can't believe I did not think of Wemby. Wemby, I'm... Wemby, man, yeah. I had a couple of guys who I crossed out. Player. Like I, I had Derek Williams at the two. Derek White. I like Derek White. Derek yeah, White. he's been he's been in constant, he's been amazing for Boston Celtics. Yeah, he's been incredible. Then I was like, man, J Dub, J Dub would be the guy, man. What do you guys think yeah. in the chat, man? Rate my lineup in the chat. One being trash, five being facts. Well, what do you guys think, man? What do you, what do you guys think? Uh, let me see some more in here. Not just Nixon. Yeah, I might want to switch out Grayson Allen. Uh, <laughs> I like Grayson Allen. I was like, I don't like Grayson Allen that much. I was, I was just watching him last night. I'm like, damn, he's really been hoping this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, ah, I don't so, like him that much. Let me switch him out. I'll that, probably go up. I'll probably get a. I'll probably get Jalen Williams. So I like that. I'll probably. I'll take your Mikael Bridges. Okay. And put okay. him over there instead of, instead of Grayson Allen. There so you I'll go. Switch that. Not just Nick's <laughs> in the chat says Brunson, Grayson Allen, Mikael Bridges, Jokic, and OG. Uh, Brightest Future okay. says uh, Brunson, OG, Mitchell, like a Spider Mitchell, Randall, and and Hart. I like our roster. Okay. Healthy. Oh, oh, uh, maybe he's maybe oh, he's just saying Mitchell Robinson. That's basically the roster. In this yeah, year, I think he's just saying Mitchell Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. My, our guy Triple M in the building, shout out Triple M, says Brunson, Jalen Williams, Mikal Bridges, Randall, and Joker. Okay. Nice. We got Steven, nice. Gutier- Steven Gutierrez, JB, Dante, OG, Nas Reed, and Joker. So he's yeah, we love some Nas Reed over uh, yeah, oh, yeah, here, oh, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a Jersey guy, man. Yeah. We, love, we love Nas Reed over here. Shout out, shout out Patterson. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then we got uh, Eric Irizarry, says JB, Booker, OG, 
well, Julius Mitch, but you got two All Stars ready in Book and Julius. There you so go. You failed, yeah. you failed the game, buddy. You failed the game. Um, <laughs> King Katona, Brunson, Dante, Hart, Macau, Bridges, Cam, Whitmore, <laughs> Nova Gang. So wow. he's yeah. going small. Ball. He doesn't care about centers. He just wants the, the Nova alumni. Give one Nova guys. Just Give the Nova alumni guys. Line up. Okay. <laughs> All right. So salute to everybody who uh, submitted uh, questions, man. Great questions. Absolutely. CP the franchise, Kaz on the ones and twos. Uh, Kaz, Wale Mania, man. Tell the people about it. This is another year. I mean, how many years is going strong now? Six. This is our. This is our. This is about to be our ninth one. Nine. Nine. Uh, it would have been our tenth if it wasn't for COVID. Right. But, right. Uh, you know, we've been doing this since uh, 2015. Uh, WrestleMania 31. Yeah. I want to say, and it is absolutely. It's it's been a, it's been amazing, man. Yeah. Uh, it, it started off as, you know, Wale and I, who's, who's been uh, you know one of my best friends on the planet for yeah. many years. Uh, going to All Star Weekend, Super Bowls, all this type of stuff, and you know all the you've been to a million yeah, of yeah, them. Yeah. There's always other things going on always. outside from just the game. Yeah, and us being big wrestling fans, we were like, "Yo, how come there's like nothing like that for like wrestling? Like, there's yeah. got to be like a Nothing's vibe. There got to be a place where that's that's just a vibe, yeah. right?" So the first time we did it, it was in uh, San Jose, California, and I'll never forget it. Because uh, our first guest of honor was Rey Mysterio. Mm. And Rey Mysterio Jr. was, uh, he had just, um, he wasn't WWE at the time. He had just uh, had the unfortunate, um, you know, tragic accident where, you know, the wrestler passed away mm -hmm. in the ring yeah. uh, while he was in it. Yeah. And um, he really needed to just be around, like, just some love, you know. And being able to see that and, and help facilitate that, shout out to Court Bauer, shout out to, you know, all the guys that helped us put it together. See Ray with, with, you know, Jim Ross and Samoa Joe and Scott Hall, rest in peace. And, you know, uh, all these incredible guys that came to just, you know, lift Ray up. Conan, just to lift Ray up in, 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 in that, friendship. Yeah. It was just it was amazing to see that brotherhood in, in, in real time. And every year it's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And I would say when we brought it to New York is when I really finally saw the scope of like how big this thing could be because, mm. you know, it was, it, it, it had, it, it had eventually, essentially turned into like the pro wrestling cookout, right? Yeah, like yeah, all yeah. the, like Eddie Palooza. Great, yeah, basically, like it was yeah. basically wrestling Eddie Palooza. Yeah, yeah. And you know, all the incredible talents that would come through. Booker T was our guest of honor. Shout out Booker T. But it was the same. But it was the same WrestleMania leading up to Kofi Mania. So, like, yeah. Kofi Kingston and the New Day coming out, and they have a surprise appearance. Everybody goes insane. And, you know, it's making headlines. And it's like, okay, now we got something for real. And then we go to Dallas, and Dallas is crazy. And then last year in Los Angeles, we brought the bloodline out and all of the incredible talents that came out from all promotions. You know, it is... It's it's really become like a one of one sort of experience because the one place where everybody from every wrestling company comes through, yeah. a bunch of football players come through, NBA players come through, guys that are it's 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 a mutual admiration society in one yeah, night, yeah. you know, and it's the biggest weekend of the year for pro wrestling. This year's gonna be no different when Philadelphia for Franklin Music Hall. Yeah. Uh, obviously Wale's performance is gonna be a big Wale and Friends performance. So we got a lot of Philly legends coming out with them for that one. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing uh, our guest of honor is Shelton, Shelton Benjamin, Benjamin. Yeah. Uh, one of the legends of the game. So we got a whole bunch of love coming out his way for that. And then of course, you know, you just never know who's going to show up, man. Like, you know, we've had some great conversations with everybody and every organization. And it's the one event that no matter where you wrestle, they can all agree they want their talent at. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. Like, it's the one thing that they all could have sort of agree. Like, this is a good thing. Let's just have fun yeah. and, and make this fun for the fans and friends and all that type of stuff. And the talent loves it, too. So um, shout out to Wale, man, for always, uh, you know, helping to bring us all together. Uh, sort of, you know, imploring me to sort of lead the charge on this thing. And uh, I'll tell you, man, if you're in the Philadelphia area, if, you, you know, you're going to be in town for WrestleMania weekend, that Thursday night is the only way to truly kick off the weekend at Wally Mania. It is the go. most 
fun you can have as a wrestling fan. Man. There it's you awesome. go. There you go, man. It's like you said, you guys had carved out like a sub community there and really filled in a white space, man. And so it's continuing yeah. to grow each year. Uh, Shelter Benjamin, man, a, a beast when, when he was in his prime, no question about it. So that that's definitely um, going to be a great event. And like I said, me and you, me, you and Jeff got to get together and, and do a separate oh, we can show. Do, we can do a whole wrestling a whole podcast. Separate we'll joint, a whole separate do. joint, man. Do. Come on the Ring of yeah. Wrestling show. Come do something. Come kick yeah. it with us, man. <laughs> a- absolutely, man. Now, uh, the main event, they're doing the co-main event now. Night one is going to be the tag team match. You got The Rock, Roman Reigns, uh, uh, Seth Rollins, and Cody Rhodes. And then you got Cody Rhodes and and, um, and Roman Reigns on Sunday night. What did you think about how they built that up so far, man? The Rock's my man, guy. I, I love the fact that he came back. with the. He got the Versace joint, the cut sleeve joints. Yes. Came back yes. classic heel. I like that, man. I'll tell you this, man. The WWE had uh, good problems, right? Like, they had very good problems. I yeah. think they initially uh, wanted to go rock Roman, which is a main event on any place on the planet, anywhere you make it. But, you know, it's a crazy time right now. The 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 the, the momentum that not just WWE is having, but especially Cody Rhodes as a guy that everybody wants to see. Yeah. You know, you know, really take the mantle as becoming like the next face of the company, next guy, mm-hmm. sort of happened. And now, I think through this sort of happy accident, we got like a really good story of The Rock. You know, sort of, which is the beautiful thing about pro wrestling, right? Yeah. Like you can kind of just lean in, pivot to. You can lean in and pivot to sort of like what people have already been sort of talking about you, right? Like yeah. you keep it yeah. a buck, right? The Rock was Teflon, still is Teflon in many sort of cases, but there's definitely those pockets of people that think, ah, you know, the movie's not doing this great. Yeah. The football's doing that or whatever. And I'm like, yo, if you, and I said this maybe three, four months ago on the Ring of Wrestling show, I said, if you hook a lie detector up to The Rock, I guarantee you, if he comes back, he wants to be a bad guy. Mm. And he wants to just tell people to, to, to he wants to call people crackheads and curse <laughs> people out and, and do the old rock stuff that we all fell yeah, in love with. Yeah, he would yeah. just, just crack on people nonstop. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know deep down inside he's tired of smiling and kissing babies and doing the, the famous Dwayne Johnson Get stuff. back to, to the essence, back, man. Get back to Put on it. the Versace shirt. Yeah, Talk yeah. shit. Like, yeah. that's what he wanted to do. So now getting to see him in that element. And I think tonight is going to be special because they're in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm. It's 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 his de facto hometown. I think we're gonna get some musical rock tonight. <laughs> and if you get musical rock, if, he's, if he bust out the guitar, yeah, he starts yeah, singing. Yeah, top tier entertainment, man. Yeah. So I'm I'm so glad that he's back. Uh, he is somebody who I think is the Michael Jordan of professional wrestling, where he's just his logo, his his presence just sort of fills the room before it comes in, and he comes at a time where you don't necessarily. I think the one thing that people have sort of always held against The Rock is that he comes in and he leaves. What makes this different is The Rock is on the board of directors at TKO. He yeah. has stake in the game yeah, yeah. in WWE now. It's part of his business. business he's not just yeah, coming to promote yeah. something. Right. This is what he's promoting. Right. So, you know, now it's not just about, oh, okay, like he might leave for a while, but he's not leaving for long. Like he's yeah. basically become the face of the company. And he comes at a time where, I think wrestling is as big as it's been since the Attitude Era, probably mm. bigger. Mm. You know, they're doing stadiums every single show, every selling show, out yeah. every single place. You got McAfee on commentary, who is a massive sports media personality in his own right. But yeah. then the, the talent is up to par. You know, you got Cody Rhodes and his story and everything that he's built away from WWE and bringing it back. You got Roman Reigns, who is the prodigal son of WWE, you know, who's coming through all of this incredible family tree of history to become the most bankable main event guy they've had probably since John Cena or yeah, Hulk Hogan true, true. or any of these guys. And you just go down the list, man. Bianca Belair, Becky Lynch, Rhea Ripley, Dominic Mysterio, just stars everywhere you look. Uh, so, you know, and, and on top of that, I'll be honest, like, it's not, it's not, it's not frowned upon to be like a proud, loud wrestling fan as it used to be, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think before for a while, people would be like, oh, you know, I kind of, then when I was yeah. a little bit, but like yeah. now it's a little bit more like, oh, yeah, I'm back now. Like, uh, this is interesting. Like, I'm back, you know, like I was when I was a kid. And 
And that, and that's what happens in wrestling. It feels like it goes in cycles. It has moments where it's hot. It has moments where it's not. True. Right now is undoubtedly a a hot, hot, hot moment in WWE and pro wrestling in general. Uh, so yeah, man, the Rock being a part of it is just the cherry on top. There, there you go. There you go, man. Well, great show, man. We definitely will be tapped in. So to everybody who submitted our fan mailbag questions once again. So to Kaz for coming through. Absolutely enjoyed it, man. And for you guys at home, we will be back at 7 p.m. for the Game of the Week preview, man. Knicks versus Kings presented by Underdog Fantasy, hosted by the Tratacaster. So make sure you guys tap in with us at 7 p.m. Eastern time to tap into that as we get you ready for a showdown with the Sacramento Kings, Brunson, OG, uh, De'Aaron Fox, Sabonis, you name it, man. So make sure you guys tap into that. Yo, Cash, once again, man, appreciate all the time. And yeah, man. We'll, DP, man. We'll thank do it again. you so much for having me on, bro. You are you are incredible at this. What you've done to build Knicks fan, fan TV, just being the face of Knicks fans everywhere, bringing people together after big, good games, bad games, all that type of stuff. I hope I'm, I'm making sure you get your flowers every single time you have to get a chance to, man, because what you do is absolutely incredible. And I appreciate you for having me on here for real. Thank appreciate you Appreciate so you, my man. guy. We'll catch up again during playoffs for sure. Enjoy Wale That's Mania. Fun. Enjoy Philly. I'll be tapped in. I'm going to be sending you some DMs, man, with my reactions as well. <laughs> and we'll do it again, man. For everybody at home, remember that the show's available in audio podcast format. No reason to miss it. Salute to our sponsors, man. Check us out. Manscaped.com. Use promo code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. And we'll see you guys later on, man. CP Cash, we out of here. Peace. Peace.